Okay, we're going to do the texture by field procedure and the educators that attended the conferences got a brochure like this. Also in your proceedings book there's a texture by field procedure that we're going to, to step through. Uh, and then once we're done with texture by field we'll, we'll go ahead and estimate the moisture uh, in, the, in the soil. And again you want to take a composite sample of the area you're testing so you get the, uh, don't take it just from one spot. Okay, to start we're going to go ahead and take 25 grams of soil in the palm, in the palm of my hand, and we're going to add water if it's not moist enough. In this case I've already pre-added water. Uh, and the first thing it does is the soil, it asks the question, does the soil remain in a ball when it's squeezed in the palm of your hand? And here you see an example, it does maintain a ball like a moist putty. Uh, and then the next question we go to, does the soil remain in a ball when squeezed? And the answer is yes, I, it will. If it doesn't, if it falls apart, it's too dry and I need to add some more moisture. So you want to have your water source close by. And then put, we want to place the ball. The next step is to place the ball between the thumb and forefinger. And then gently push the soil with the thumb, squeezing it upward into a ribbon like this and then form a ribbon of uniform thickness and width and allow the ribbon to emerge and extend over the forefinger breaking from its own weight. So now you see that it's broke. So it did form a ribbon, so we say yes to that question. The next step is it make a weak ribbon that's one inch, uh, less than one inch long before breaking. And if you notice, it's right at one inch. So I'm gonna say yes, that it broke at less than one inch. And then the next question is, is uh, <clears throat> to go on down to excessively uh, wet a small pinch of soil between the palm of your hand. So we want to make it really wet like this, okay, so we can feel what it feels like. And it says, does the soil feel gritty and, or does the soil feel very smooth? Or, or does the neither is it neither gritty or smooth? So it's going. To, I'm going to have either a sandy loam, a silt loam, or a loam if you follow through. And in this case, it does feel gritty. Okay, so it's going to be a sandy loam texture. If it felt smooth, if I didn't feel that uh, the grittiness in there, then it would be a silt loam. If it felt neither gritty or smooth, then it would be considered a loam. Okay, uh, to, to summarize what we want to accomplish with the texture uh, is we want to classify uh, the soil into a texture grouping, uh, <clears throat> either a sandy loam, silt loam, loam, sandy clay loam, silty clay loam, clay loam, sandy clay, silty clay, clay, etc. And the importance of that is that different textures have different available water capacity. For example, a silt loam would have about two and a half inches of available water capacity versus a fine sand. Uh, when you get on the sandy end of the scale, uh, it may have less than one inch of water. So that's real important for things like nutrient management. It's also important to know your texture to get an idea of the cation exchange capacity and other important soil properties and, and how to properly manage your soil. So that's the primary reason we want to do soil texture.